People want to become so famous that they're even willing to, um, or their kids to be famous. They're willing to, uh, I guess, prostitute your kids so they they can become famous. You're you're giving up your child so it, um, they could become famous. Now, whether you know this Sean Diddy Combs was a predator or not, but I'm pretty sure you heard rumors about it. Or you're not being a good parent because you just left your kids with Sean Diddy Combs. And the reason why I'm saying this is because this recent lawsuit that uh, these lawyers had a press conference, they're claiming that 25 uh, 120 victims and 25 of those victims were children. Okay. These were children that Sean Diddy Combs had access to. And some as young as nine years old. This lawyer is charging each allegation separately in whatever state it happened in, okay? So he's taken on these cases, but it's not a class action lawsuit. You guys put in the chat, I wanna make sure you could hear the volume. Let me just try to turn it up. Hold on for a second. And we're gonna follow this evidence wherever it takes us. We will find the silent accomplices. We will expose with people claiming people claiming to have been victimized by Sean Combs. After vetting, we now represent 120 individuals who intend to bring civil claims in civil court against Sean Diddy Combs, as well as claims against many other individuals and entities that we will name as defendants as we file these individual cases. And you should know, to the extent the clients feel comfortable, we also intend to make these individuals available to the authorities, specifically to the FBI. And you should also know a few of them have already been spoken to by the FBI. Now, before we discuss the nature of the claims and claimants themselves, let me comment on the large volume of calls we have received since our first announcement. Even before the indictment of Sean Combs, we had received a small volume of calls and had screened a handful of cases. After the indictment of Sean Combs and the announcement that we were pursuing these claims, the floodgates opened. People who wouldn't otherwise for a variety of reasons are now stepping forward to make their voices heard and to pursue justice. But no, most of these people are scared. They fear backlash in their communities. They fear backlash in their own families. They are afraid of retaliation from the perpetrators and their associates. They are rightly afraid for their own personal safety. I expect that through this process, many powerful people will be exposed. Many dirty secrets will be revealed. We know what we are potentially up against. And as is always the case in situations like this, when a celebrity is involved, People can be downright mean and nasty. You would be shocked at the length fans will go, no matter the evidence, to the contrary, to defend celebrities they love. I mean, there's a reason for this word fans. They're fanatics. I've personally already been threatened multiple times on social media. And when I agreed to pursue this, I expected as much. This isn't my first rodeo. But victims who step forward to have their voices heard should not be subjected to that kind of conduct. They should not be targeted. I want to say this, and I want to be clear about it. Although we are vetting each call as stringently as we can, I always start with a mindset that I believe victims. So he believes the victims um, first, and I guess that's a good mindset to have. Um, but they received a lot of calls. And of course, you know, being a lawyer, you got to do your due diligence to make sure these claims are not frivolous. And, you know, you have 
uh, you want to do your your clients justice. So you just don't want to take on that case if you can't prove it in court. You don't want to give them hope of, yeah, you know, we'll take on your claim. And if the attorney for Puff Daddy find finds out like it's one frivolous claim, they're going to try to dispute all the claims. So, of course, they want to make sure they could corroborate um, these claims and have, uh, you know, some actual evidence to back up their claim. Victims, because I understand the tremendous courage it takes to step forward. So if you're watching this, please hear me. If you're out there and you have been victimized, you are not alone. There is a great strength in numbers. You can seek redress. You can obtain justice. We can help you and we will help you. That being said, as stated, we are vetting every call that we receive. We have had to turn away some. For each, we ask for corroboration. For each, we ask for the identity of witnesses. We also have collected pictures, videos, texts. We check venues, we check dates. We want to corroborate that the claims being made have legitimacy and merit. We have on staff now a former detective from the Major Offenders Unit of Houston Police Department who is helping us vet each claim. We're using our common sense. We're being stringent because, as I said, these are not easy cases. They're very tough. The process is hard, and in some cases, the process is very lengthy. These cases are hard to prove. Many times, it's the victim's word against the alleged perpetrator. Each of these victims will no doubt be publicly attacked by the alleged perpetrators, and in some cases, the general public. The feckless and cowardly keyboard warriors love to attack. We know what we're up against. We did not enter this fray blindly. I wish it was my last such fray. I wish this type of hate behavior wasn't so pervasive, but it is what it is, so we will press on. As I said, our law firms have been retained by 120 individuals at this point to pursue cases in civil court against Sean Diddy Combs. You should know, in this group, it is evenly divided between males and females. There are 60 males and 60 females who have joined us to pursue these claims as plaintiffs. In this group, 62% identify as African American, 30% are white, and the remainder are Hispanic or Asian. The victims are from more than 25 states. The majority are from California, New York, Georgia, and Florida. And I want to focus on the ages of these victims. When we talk about the ages of the victims when the conduct occurred, it's shocking. Our youngest victim at the time of the occurrence is, was nine years old. We have an individual who was 14 years old. We have one who was 15. 25 of the 120 individuals who are plaintiffs in these cases were minors at the time of the acts complained of. The time frame of the acts complained of is very wide. The conduct at issue spans from the years 1991 all the way till this year, 2024. If you wonder why there are so many alleged victims, that's your answer. We're talking about more than 25 years of this type of conduct. Now, although most of the victims who have stepped forward were victimized after 2015, this has been going on for a very long time. Now, when you think about the fact that some of this conduct occurred 25 years ago, and you wonder why would it take somebody so long to step forward, I want to remind you that, that many states in the United States have recognized that it's very difficult for a victim to step forward and to make these types of allegations when something very terrible has happened to them. I'll use New York, the state of New York, as an example. The state of New York has specific statutes in place that revive claims that are even claims that would typically be not able to be brought, that revive such claims, and they can be brought even 25 to 30 years later. 
because there's a recognition there in New York and California and other states that, that it's very difficult for a victim to come forward. And I would, I would respectfully suggest the only reason many of these people are coming forward because they see other victims coming forward. And it gives them some comfort that, hey, I won't be the only one. And I expect more victims will come forward. You know, there's an old saying that says, a lie has great speed, but truth has endurance. The acts complained of in these cases that we're going to file occurred primarily in New York, either Manhattan or the Hamptons, or occurred in California, primarily in Los Angeles, or in Florida, primarily in Miami. Most of these events and incidents occurred at parties, typically after parties, or album release parties, New Year's Eve parties, Fourth of July parties, something they called a puppy party, the all-white party, a puppy party. Just imagine what the hell is a puppy party? You act like a dog? Or are they referring to kids? Puppies? Disgusting. Just imagine you, you're thinking like, oh, I'm going to meet all these famous people. And then you go in and they started assaulting you. Your dream, your your um, career rapper or dream rapper or whatever or person that you, artist that you totally love, they invite you to a party and you get assaulted. Although several of these events occurred at auditions. Many times, uh, especially young people, people wanting to break into the industry were, were coerced into this type of conduct uh, in the promise of being made a star or in the promise of, of having um, Sean Combs listen to their tape or even let them read for Sean Combs. You should know that some of this behavior occurred at well-known venues in New York City. Some of this behavior occurred at private residences of people that we all know. Some of this behavior occurred at hotels that we're all familiar with. Anyone with $10,000 or more in credit card debt or personal loans may qualify for help from national debt relief. Minimum you should know that more than 55% of the victims filed reports, reported this conduct to either the authorities, that is the police, or to hospitals. We are in the process of collecting with our team assistance uh, medical records, uh, reports that were made to the authorities, and I've already said that some of the individuals in this group did in fact talk to the FBI. You should know that, that several of the individuals, and when I say several, I mean many, uh, who did in fact seek medical treatment were drug tested, and drugs were found in their system, weird drugs, drugs that you probably never heard of. One in particular that, that continues to pop up is a drug called xylazine or Trank, which based on uh, our research is known as a horse tranquilizer. Now, there's been a lot of reports that we're filing a class action. This is not a class action. Class action is when one or two people file a case on behalf of a group of people. That's not this. These cases will be individual cases. Each case will live and die on its own merit. These cases will be filed individually, one plaintiff against whoever the defendants were involved in the case. Each case may be filed in one venue like California. Another case may be filed in New York. One case may sue just Sean Combs, but multiple other people. One case may sue a range of people. I would expect most, though, to be filed, as I said, in New York and Los Angeles. Now, I know this. Many of you came here thinking or hoping or perhaps uh, believing that I may start naming names. Well, that day will come, but it won't be today. The day will come when we will name names other than Sean Combs, and there's a lot of names. Um, it's a long list already. And of course, I already know who some of these individuals are, but because of the nature of this case, we're going to make damn sure, damn sure that we're right before we do that. Uh, but the names that we're going to name, assuming that our investigators confirm and corroborate what we've been told, are names that will shock you. These are individual cases. There are indeed other perpetrators involved. They will be revealed when that particular individual case is ready to be filed. 
they already know who they are. And I'm talking here about not just the cowardly but complicit bystanders. That is, those people that we know watched this behavior occur and did nothing. I'm talking about the people that participated, encouraged it, egged it on. They know who they are. I call them the facilitators of foul play, willing participants in vile conduct. As we identify them, each will be part of this case as defendants. These defendants will not only include individuals, but will also include corporate entities who ultimately profited off of this culture and behavior. I'm looking at banks, pharmaceutical companies, hotels. We know that many of these individuals were paid cash. We know that, that many of these individuals involved, whether they were the ones being assaulted and abused or they're witnessing other people being assaulted and abused and then paid and threatened and told to leave. Typically paid 10 grand in cash and told to leave and then threatened as they were leaving. So in addition to Sean Combs, you should know the defendants in these cases we're going to file will include anyone, of course, who engaged in the assault or exploitation, anyone who participated in such in any way, anyone who encouraged or facilitated this conduct, anyone who was in the room and watched it happen but made no effort to stop it, any venue or venue owner who was aware of what was going on but failed to stop it, any individual or entity who knew about the conduct and benefited from it but did nothing to report it or stop it, and any individual or entity who covered it up or helped cover it up. These people who know who they are should just come forward now. I would imagine as we speak here, there are a myriad of people who are very nervous. You can't hide skeletons in the closet forever. I would expect there are many people out there right now who are, who are desperately searching their memories as they delete their text and data. Now, although these are in fact individual cases, there is a common theme, an MO, if you will. Typically, the victim is lured into a situation where he or she is given a drink. Typically, that drink reported by these victims is apparently laced with something. Once that drink takes effect, the perpetrators perform all kinds of sexual acts on the victims, many times passing him or her around as other people watch and enjoy the show and then leave the victim ashamed, confused, injured, and wondering what happened. When the victim reaches out, he or she is told not to say anything. Sometimes there are threats of all physical violence or financial repercussions or bodily harm. Just to recap, uh, he said he's going after the drug companies also. Now, if you go back to when Sean Puffy Combs was raided with, uh, by the Homeland Security and even his uh, indictment, they talked about this drug cocktail that was mixed with like ketamine, um, cocaine or some type of um, type of drug. But anyway, it, it was a cocktail. And, you know, I guess if you really think about it, if you're having parties maybe every weekend or every other weekend and there's hundreds of people there, how are you actually supplying the drugs? Now, you can get it from, a, a, I guess, a, a drug dealer, but since Sean Combs, he's pretty much up there, he probably had access to maybe a doctor who was supplying him these drugs. So, I mean, I think... You know, I'm going to continue this, um, but I believe... Sean, Sean Combs, he probably would not see the light of day if they actually take him to trial or he might just do a plea deal. And that's if he actually makes it out of jail or makes it to trial because they might. You know what I'm saying? Unalive him in jail, depending on what type of information they have on other people or what type of information he has on other people. If Sean comes now, they said he's a, I guess he will be a drug addict if he's taking the drugs as well. But if Sean, Sean comes was, you know, inebriated and taking drugs during all these wild parties, can he remember some of the stuff that he was doing? You know, if you're on drugs, do you remember everything? Probably not. So 
I guess he will probably have to go back to vi revisit the video or view the video that he taped. Violent sexual assault or rape, sexual abuse, facilitated sex with a controlled substance, false imprisonment, compelling prostitution, sexual misconduct, dissemination of video recordings, false imprisonment, sexual abuse of minors. Given the large volume of cases and given our other docket obligations, and given the fact that we want to be sure when we file these cases that they are fully vetted, I expect we'll start filing these cases against Sean Combs and other perpetrators within the next 30 days. So I'm going to fast forward from this part and get to when he gets to the little or, or the details of what the allegations were. This is kind of jaw dropping. This is actually my second time or third time viewing this and I hear details that I haven't heard before. So it's kind of like me hearing from the first time and it's kind of shocking. It's really disgusting how we have a, a people, and it's not just Sean Puffy Combs. We just want to get that out. It's not just him. It's a group of people that preyed on another group of people and say, oh, you want to get into this industry. We are going to use you and abuse you. And we're all going to watch. We're all going to watch and say, man, we got that. You know, probably high-fiving each other like, Dang, why you do that girl like that? Or why do you do that boy like that? It's just a group of people. Let me just get to some of your comments while you, while, while I'm doing that. Um, uh, yup, fo too. I do not blame uh, the people for waiting until Diddy was locked up. Yeah, I don't blame them either. I don't blame those people. Uh, they probably was fearful. And then you got to re realize he's going to get into detail about some of the type of victims. Some of these victims was like nobody. Like one victim, he just randomly, they randomly went up to her. She walking on the street. Oh, you want to come to the Diddy party? And she was like, oh, yeah. Sounds fun. Lexi Diddy is a freaking monster. Yes, he is. Yuck Fo too. Leonardo DiCaprio isn't good. Tom Hanks isn't good. Exactly. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio, he was, I seen a few pictures of him on the boat with Diddy. Partying up, whatever they was doing. Um, get noticed with Nikki. It's amazing that none of their friends are speaking up for him like nobody because they probably friends that actually contribute to this madness. Uh, anyone that speaks out will be canceled quickly. They tried to cancel um, Cassie, even though she wasn't in the music industry. But they came at her like, oh, all she wants, she's just trying to bring a black man down. All she wants is money. And then after he settled, that video came out. He's, we, okay, red flag, you settled so nothing would come out. And then somebody still released his tape. They probably was trying to blackmail you, maybe. And he said he wasn't paying. So they released this tape of her getting stumped out and dragged throughout the hotel. Donatello said, I would love to see Vance Donald tickets in on 2028. Uh, Yuck photo. Uh, they probably take ecstasy and cuddle with the puppies. Then hopefully nothing else. These people are evil. Uh, Celeste says, I hope the people are getting therapy. It's going to get worse before it gets better. I guarantee they have PTSD. I used to work with people who got hurt and it's a long road. Yeah, it is. Uh, mo money, mo money, mo money. Um... You guys don't forget to hit the like button and the um, subscribe button and share share this video. 
Kings on Live, the excitement for Celeb is getting over and they realize it now, uh, too now. Uh, one thing I would like to know if the, there's some regrets on um you know how you have these dreams to make it big or whatever you're trying to do and you say oh if i could get this one chance and i can make it big if somebody would just notice me and i can make it big and looking at that hindsight you know, them wanting that stardom or fame so much hindsight, was it really worth it? You know, I don't, I don't think it was. Let me just fast forward this part uh, to where he started talking about um, the victims. You can file these cases, these individual cases uh, under Jane Doe or John Doe. Uh, each state is different in that respect. Uh, typically there is a, a balancing test, like the public's right to know the name of the of the victim and plaintiff versus versus uh, the confidentiality and the safety of the plaintiff. So we'll have to struggle with that with each one of these cases. Our intention, of course, is to, like we always do, file these cases uh, under a pseudonym uh, until the court tells us otherwise. But let me let me share with you a few a few just kind of give you a sense of the kind of cases and the kind of instances that uh, people are calling and reporting that we are trying to corroborate, vet, uh, and these are the ones that we've already corroborated, vetted, and collected evidence on. Um, one individual who was 22 years at the time uh, um, she was assaulted said that uh, the, the typical MO at one of these parties that have been widely discussed um, in the press was that when, when you were handed a drink, and now we know that the drink is laced with something, if you refuse to drink it, you were kicked out of the party. Now, let that sink in for a minute. I mean, the admission to this party was that you had to drink this, the chosen drink that was handed to you. Uh, and now we know that, that in, in most cases, I would say 90% of the cases, uh, these individuals were drugged with some sort of drug. That's, that was kind of the MO. Another instance, uh, this individual who was nine years old at the time uh, was uh, taken to an audition in New York City with Bad Boy Records. Uh, other boys were there to audition as well. All of them were trying to land a record deal. All of them were minors. Uh, this individual was sexually abused, allegedly by Sean Combs and several other people at the studio. Uh, in the promise uh, to both his parents and uh, to him himself of getting a record deal. Um, another instance, another minor, uh, told allegedly by Sean Combs that he would make him a star, but he needed to visit with him in private about it, away from uh, his parents. Once uh, they were in a private area, allegedly Mr. Combs made uh, the victim uh, perform oral sex upon him. Uh, another incident, uh, an individual 15 years old at the time flown uh, to New York City to attend a party, uh, was drugged, and then taken into a private room, uh, allegedly in the presence of Mr. Combs, uh, where this uh, female individual minor was raped, and then other individuals took turns. Her. Another individual, 26, at the time of the occurrence, uh, was picked up by, allegedly, by Mr. Combs and several other people uh, in a black SUV from the airport. Uh, was given one drink in the SUV and then literally woke up the next day not knowing what had happened, but with pain and damage to both vagina and her ass, where she was then. She then went to the hospital. She was missing her underwear and her shoes. Another instance, individual, uh, this time not a minor, uh, was attended a group dinner, allegedly with Sean Combs in Miami. Uh, she wasn't drinking because she was pregnant. Uh, but she, whatever she drank at the table, apparently, at least according to her, was laced with something. She blacked out and she woke up in the same bed, again, allegedly, with Mr. Combs uh, in his uh, mansion in Miami. Her and her were torn and sore. Um, and I could go on. I mean, literally, you, you, you're, you're sensing a theme here. It's, it's the same theme. Uh, and it all involves uh, some sort of drug. Um, one instance, an individual who was 20 years old at the time uh, was asked to attend, just saw her on the street, asked to attend a party in a hotel. Um, she was flattered, went to the party, was given one drink and doesn't remember anything else. Ultimately, uh, was so messed up, was, went to the hospital where they found um, cocaine and this horse tranquilizer in her blood system. I'm going to give you a quote from 
a very young man uh, who told us over the phone about his experience and all the things that happened to him, uh, he says, allegedly at the hands of Sean Diddy Combs and his friends uh, in the effort to try to sign um, a record deal. Uh, this was kind of what he was told he would have to do. His quote is, had he not been in power, I feel like I could have been something great. I quit, I quit the industry because of what Sean Combs did to me. And that's really what it comes down to. We are pursuing this, asking you to support this effort, to encourage witnesses and victims to come forward and bring your evidence so we can continue to break down this wall of silence and we can continue uh, to have these stories heard. Um, this is the beginning of what I hope to be a national dialogue. This type of sexual assault, sexual abuse, and sexual exploitation should never happen in the United States, in the United States or anywhere else. This should have never been allowed to go on for so long. This conduct has created a mass of individuals who are injured, scared, and scarred. If you're one of those individuals, we ask you to reach out. If not to us, to someone you trust. If you're someone who witnessed any of these events, we ask you to reach out. Your name can remain confidential. Diddy is a monster. We could say that. We already came to that conclusion. But his friends, the people that surround surrounded Diddy, protected Diddy, that did Diddy like that, they're monsters too. So, and I, I hope they uh, get all of them. I hope all of them end up going to jail. And I hope they add these names to these co-conspirators in Diddy's RICO charge. Hopefully, all of them will be under the jail because we're talking about sexual abuse with minors. It's bad any any way you look at it is bad, but we're talking about minors, a nine year old boy. It's disgusting. It, it is it's actually repulsive. Anyway, so you guys put in in the chat. Let me know if you feel who who's the next in line. Who do you think? Diddy, and he said these high-powered individuals. So who do you think they're talking about or this lawyer was talking about when he said, oh, we know the names. Who do you think they are or were? I I, I could name several names, but I mean, the, the list is endless because <laughs> we're talking about the music industry. And Diddy, he was everywhere, you know, in everybody music video. So it could be anybody. 